What's your minimum specification? Hi everyone, hope you're enjoying the heat. I feel a bit like a baked potato right now. But today's news is on uh, a topic that's been going around the web. It's about Apple ditching Intel for ARM. And one of the reasons that's been pirated around recently is the fact that uh, Apple were finding more errors in Intel Silicon than Intel was. And this was this is one of the reasons why they've decided to make the switch to making their own silicon because then they can debug it themselves. Now, silicon design is a very complex process. Um, after you actually design the chip, you've got to verify it and bring it up and then eventually ship it out you know, to tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions of people. And the idea is that you design once and you build many times and the fewer bugs you can put in, um, the fewer bugs that end up in the silicon, the better. Ideally, you want zero bugs. Um, but it's a very complex process, and there are a lot of people paid a lot of money to find these. Now, customers finding bugs in Intel Silicon or in AMD Silicon or in any other Silicon um, is nothing new. Um, this has happened since you know, time immemorial. Uh, the question is always one of scale. How likely are you to find a bug, and how many hours are you putting into actually detecting that bug? Um, you could take a year to find a bug, and only have 10,000 chips to do it. But if one of your customers has a million chips, they might find it in a matter of hours. Um, and the reason why I bring this up, and I don't think it's that big a deal um, when it comes to news, is because uh, Intel CTO Mike Mowbray, uh, last week at the VLSI conference, um, he had a plenary talk, and you know this is what he said. Failing from a reliability point of view, I talked about this a bit in the reliability conference earlier this year, Let's imagine we're creating a product and we're able to, to run a certain number of cycles on that product before we can begin shipments. Well, the notion of mass uh, production is you, you design once and you build multiple times. And so by its nature, you're going to be able to, to see larger things simply in a statistical sense um, across your fleet than you would be able to do within your laboratory. And with hyperscale computing, that runs the risk that you begin seeing things far more frequently uh, that were intermittent before. If you recall, uh, soft error was originally detected when uh, when we started to build large enough scale systems that you could you could begin to see those. And so this this creates a need to think about um, not just reliability from an error prevention, although we need to focus on that as well. But reliability in the sense of how do you make a system resilient? How do you detect, correct, and move on from, particularly if statistically your error in counter frequency uh, is over a very broad time scale, depending on the scale of the system that you're looking at. So, yeah, there you have it. Intel does a lot of internal verification. It will take wafers and wafers and wafers off the production line, and they will test it. They'll test for all the standard stuff, they'll test for bugs, and they'll test for customer software. Now, the thing is when, say, Amazon goes and deploys uh, a million chips, or Google deploys a million chips, there will be a team of Intel field application engineers that go along to help deploy the silicon that help also run the tests. And if any errata are found, uh, then Intel will work with the company involved, typically to either fix it as best they can or patch it. Now, don't forget, these companies end up getting silicon uh, 6 to 12 months in advance. And you can bet it's the same thing with Apple. Apple will be seeing some of these Intel bugs that Intel has never found before. Intel cannot check for every eventuality. You know, this is worse than an MP hard type problem. So the fact that, you know, Apple decided to ditch Intel so they could do their own silicon... Apple's going to have the same sort of issue with their silicon. I mean, they're not selling it to anybody. Uh, they're not selling it to anybody else to put into their products. They're selling it to end users. So end users may end up finding bugs in Apple's own silicon. You know, when Intel customers of Intel and end users of Intel even find bugs in Intel silicon themselves. So that isn't going to be new. It's the reason I'm of the opinion that Apple's moving to a more ARM-based infrastructure in its low-end laptops is because... It's a it's a vertical um, it's being vertically integrated. It's they want more control over the pipeline. They can amortize the cost over hundreds of thousands of devices, and they've already started putting the software ecosystem together to move towards that. So, I don't think there's anything new in what we're hearing about in, about Apple moving away from Intel because they keep finding bugs. That's just the state of play. 
That's always happened, and it's going to continue to happen. If you've liked this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. We have a bell here that you can click to be the latest to uh, get all new videos. And uh, what's your minimum specification?